Sometimes it makes sense to browse through old books, like these ones here, for example. In the 1930s and 40s, before the invention of magnetic tape, there was a large community of record-cutting enthusiasts. During this period, several publications appeared, especially in Germany, targeting the home engineer as their primary audience. The basic principles have hardly changed, and so even today these books remain an inspiration to me. As you may know, I'm building my own record embossing lace, and I'd like to welcome you to join me on my process. If you enjoy my content, feel free to support me via PayPal and me. Today we are going to take a look at the turntable design. The tray is constructed to fit 10, 7 and 5 inch records. In the center is a press down device that is screwed onto the center pin. There are four rubber rings embedded in the platter beneath the blanks. These give the blank enough grip to prevent slipping through the embossing process. To prevent the press down device from loosening during cutting, it is secured with the left hand screw. Tighten it counterclockwise. At least that's my plan for how the platter will be designed and be built. To get a better feel for the components, I started by 3D printing smaller segments and parts. This allows me to check dimensions with minimal material costs and make corrections if needed. I began by screwing the left hand threaded M4 screw into the center of the prototype. A matching nut is inserted on the other side to ensure everything is securely fastened. Next, I screwed the pizza slice shaped object onto the center hub on the shaft. The shaft protrudes slightly from the hub and centers the platter to prevent eccentricity. Now an initial rotation test can be carried out to see if anything blocks the movement. I designed three different center hole adapters, so the different blanks can be placed perfectly centered on the platter. Here you see a few fit checks, which, as you may notice, still need some refinement. The first test fit with a blank looks promising though. To get a more accurate impression of the final dimensions, I printed the complete platter. To do this, I had to divide it into three parts, otherwise it wouldn't have fit into the 3D printer. To save costs, I choose slightly thicker walls, but kept the infill below 8%. As I said, it's just a mock-up, not the final platter. I removed some of the aluminum profiles, which will be need to be shortened later on. Again, I first install the left hand screw in the center. Then the radial arranged mounting screws can be attached to the shaft hub. I've also updated the center hole adapters and they now fit nicely into the middle of the platter. The side pieces of the platter are attached with screws for this mock-up at least. This gives me a good idea of what the final turntable dimensions will look like inside the lathe. For the first prototype of the press down device, I initially used felt inserts on the bottom. However, these are too slippery and will later be replaced with silicon or some rubber elements. The center hole adapters come in three sizes. The standard 7mm hole for vinyl records, a 50mm adapter for the blank CDs, and a 37mm adapter for jukebox style discs. 
The silicon rings have now arrived via mail. One ring is clipped onto the underside of the press down device. Together with the rubber rings on top of the platter, the plank has enough grip to stay in place during the embossing process. The rings I use are actually sealing rings made of 3mm EPDM rubber with the shore hardness of 7T. They shouldn't be any harder than that, but the ones I found should work fine. For the final platter, I choose 50mm thick PUM plastic. It's easy to mill, provides acoustic damping and unlike aluminum, it is not a good heat conductor. Since the blanks are preheated, this will matter later on. One detail I'd like to mention is that the EPDM rings protrude about 0.2mm from the grooves. Just enough for them to compress slightly when the blank is pressed down. I had considered other options before like using sticky cell phone pads or installing tangential magnetic press down sickle shaped devices. But in the end the sealing rim solution is simple and most cost effective and it's very easy for the operator to use. In the next episode we will look at the damping vibrations in the support structure and how the frame can be decoupled from the case. I've also improved some elements in the feet and lever arm that I will show you in detail. And soon we will take a look at the milling of the final turntable itself. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. All the best and see you next time.